G'day folks, in today's clip we're going to be doing a little bit of an update in general on the aquaponics and just bring you a bit of an update on that little uh, trickle slash biofilter that I've got trying to clean up the nitrites in the water. Well to begin with we'll have a little bit of a chat about the little filter down there. Now a couple of clips ago I posted an update um, just showing that I had a large amount of nitrite coming through the solid settler which is understandable. Fish um, put their waste in the water, comes through here there's no biofiltration and there's a fairly large amount exiting the settler there. I also did a test and found I had a lot of nitrite coming out through the water of the um, inlet back into the fish tank. And that is obviously an issue for folks who don't have salt in their system as it could give the fish brown blood disease, which is basically nitrite poisoning. Now the levels I saw weren't drastically bad, especially as I mentioned, the system is salted but still it wasn't acceptable to me. It's just one of the issues that um, is inherent in the split flow or chop two style systems if you don't have biofiltration before the water is picked up and delivered back into the fish tank. Now onto the filter itself. Uh, previously I had a shake cloth based filter, um, just some shake cloth in the drum. The water flowed through it and then hopefully that was going to remove the fines and also have enough biological surface area to act as a bit of a biofilter. Unfortunately that didn't happen, so I made up a new one. It's the same 60 litre barrel as the old shake cloth filter that was in there. The only difference is I've drilled a load of 8 millimetre holes all around the outside. The reason I've gone with 8 millimetre is it's slightly smaller than the biomedia and it won't allow it to uh, wash out into the sump. In the drum itself I popped in around about 45 litres of this biomedia and then on top of it I've placed one of these 50 mil or 2 inch sponges and you might be able to make out down in there. It's doing a uh, fairly good job at collecting those solids. I've had to wash it out pretty much well every fourth day just to get a load of that crud out there um, so the water doesn't back up too far. But so far it's doing a fairly good job um, in so far as I'm starting to see a reduction in the nitrites that are coming through into the fish tank itself. The method I've used to test how well the filter is working is I've been feeding the fish. First off I throw in 35 grams and if they smash through that quickly enough I generally give them about another 20 grams so they're getting roughly 50 grams of feed at the moment. I've been leaving it half an hour then coming back and testing the water inlet over there and also testing down here at the outlet from the radial flow settler just the ammonia and the nitrite levels. And after half an hour I've found that I'm getting very little out of the radial flow settler itself and yeah next to nothing trace if anything out of the inlet back into the fish tank. So this little filter is definitely doing its job or the intended job and that was to act as a biofilter to transform the ammonia through to nitrite and then through to nitrate. What I found it, uh, it generally takes round about an hour when I come back an hour later and test the water going back into the fish tank I find that I've got no nitrite whatsoever. As to whether I think this little filter down here is doing a good enough job at the moment it is for the amount of feed going in there and I'm also impressed that the bacteria set up colonies so fast especially with the cooler weather we've got and the water temperature is down a little bit below what they would normally prefer it. Um, so yeah we'll just have to wait and see. As the fish put on more size and I increase the amount of feed that goes in there to them there will be a lot more ammonia coming through that needs to be processed and if this little jobby can't keep up with it as I mentioned in another clip I will be um, building a standalone moving bed bioreactor here. Um, I wasn't really wanting to uh, just because of the amount of room it'll take up but it might be something I just have to do. So I like to keep the system running as clean as I can. So I have had a few people want to know how much biomedia to use in a filter whether it be something like this which I'm not suggesting you try at this point in time but any sort of biofilter. Um, it's not something I can sort of say this many litres will give you this much of biofiltration mainly because it comes down to water temperature, the percentage of protein within the feed you're giving your fish how much feed by weight you're giving the fish and the biological surface area of the biomedia itself um, and also retention time comes into it and all the rest of it. Now if you're in a commercial setting there's formulas and equations and you can work that all out to a T. Um, I'm interested in backyard farming so what I'm going to do is do a clip down the road that explains all the different aspects of it as it pertains to a backyard system. Um, some commercial people will probably scoff at what I'm going to say 
but it's just one of those things trying to help you backyarders out so um, that clip will be coming on down the line so this clip definitely isn't a how-to or a recommendation to build a filter like that it's just a little bit of an experiment like i've you know done with other clips on the channel so yeah stay tuned if you want to see how this goes through the season all you need to do is um click that little subscribe button down there and you know the rest so i'll pretty much we'll leave that there uh, as for a look at the rest of the system we'll start with a couple of figures and yes i do know i've got the probes down there in water but they're taken out i get people complain about that all the time temperature wise we are sitting at 21 degrees celsius and ph wise we will probably drop down to i would guess 6.8 if we give it long enough there we go she's starting to drop down a little bit the system is pretty much all in operating parameters i like it to be between um, 6.8 and 6.5 whenever i see it get down to 6.5 that's when i dose up with a little bit of calcium hydroxide or maybe some potassium bicarbonate uh, the plants in the system well they're going gangbusters we can't keep on top of this parsley but that's new no huge drama uh, we're giving a bit away um, to family when they pop by the lettuce here is pretty much all, all bolting but i do have some more seedlings on the way thank you very much mark and they will be taking up um, some real estate in this bed here we're also starting to get a few more of those cluster caterpillars that we think are heliophis in here i came through and squished a number of the small ones on this lettuce the other day uh, but i think i've pretty much all got them all looked after uh, for the caterpillars in general i've been using dipole spray in australia the brand that most people will be familiar with is nature's way dipole it's a bacillus thuringiensis bacteria the caterpillars eat a leaf that is sprayed with it and it um, the bacteria basically multiply in the gut of the caterpillar and pretty much well yeah knocks them on the head over a day or two so you don't get too many holes in your leaves um what else oh around the side here over here we have some water spinach chinese water spinach that i really should repot out um alan gave it to me when i was helping him clean up his bed the other day um yeah if you want to check that out if you haven't seen it i did a uh, visit to a small commercial farm that's uh, sort of being wound down at the moment there'll be a little link pop up there but this was one of the plants he was growing and it needs to be divided out just waiting for um, some of these guys to come out before i do that down here bianca is um, trying to strike some of the cuttings from the bay tree that we trim back and just around here is some of bianca's spring onions just bits and pieces that we've chopped off the greens for upstairs and yeah they've started to go a bit manky so we just tossed them into the bed and over here we've done the same thing over the last couple of months and we're starting to get some nice looking green onions the plants in these this bed is doing fairly well as you can see we've got a couple of small holes here there we go we are starting to see some small caterpillars and i dare say they're the um the white cabbage butterfly so i'll squish them and there's another one over here so maybe i do need to come out with the dipole again oh, we have had a bit of rain as you can see on the leaves there's a few drops of water so that's probably got something to do with it um yeah so the plants we have in here are um some broccoli and we're starting to get some modeling on the leaves definitely not a nitrate issue so i'll have to try and um, source a, a um, iron test and see if it's iron or magnesium and you can see some modeling on these leaves here um, so yeah there, there could also be an issue with too high nitrate i was told that if your nitrate gets too high that it can lock out other nutrients i haven't read any articles on that yet so something i need to investigate over here we have a bok choy actually harvested a really really nice one a week or so ago that came out of the corner from that bed over there and yeah it was very tasty this is another one from that same punnet we have another one over there that needs to be harvested here we have one from the same punnet but it went to flower so i decided to leave it to attract some um, beneficials what we ended up getting is this little praying mantis here setting up shop he's been here for over a week now had visitors find him last weekend on there and um, it came out the other day and it looked like he was munching down on a hoverfly so obviously you know bees and hoverflies and those sort of things are attracted by the flowers and then uh, this little fella is ambushing him i really don't want to get rid of him though because he is you know fulfilling a role in nature so we'll just leave him be for now um other plants we've got the beetroot starting to um form up some nice little root sections down in there and we have some sweet leaf sorry that's corn salad uh, we have had a couple of leaves out of that 
it's not something, you know, flavor-wise would probably grow again, but at the moment it is just good to nip off a few bits and pieces and toss into stir fries. Uh, the tatsoi really does need to be um, cut back this week and tossed into a couple of stir fry dishes. Um, the reason we haven't harvested much from here at the moment is the uh, veggie pods down the back have sort of exploded and we're harvesting a lot of greens out of there just trying to thin them back at the moment. These warrigal greens, I was going to pull them out of the system when I was worried about not having enough nitrates for the rest of the plants, but obviously I have more than enough nitrates in the system, so I'm going to let them grow down here and along the pavers, mainly because while this kangkong does normally grow to be a rather large plant, it just doesn't do as well in the cooler months, whereas these warrigal greens will pretty much all thrive through the cooler winter months we have here. Uh, they're definitely not as cold as a lot of you folks have. Uh, our cooler winter months, we very rarely go below freezing or zero Celsius here. And if we do, it's only for a few hours at a time. Just give you a bit of a look around here as well. We have some more of Bianca's green onions that are pretty much all right for us to start nipping off to use up in the kitchen, nice and firm there. Uh, some more of that corn salad. And down here we have some mushroom herb. These are just cuttings I took from the old aquaponic system and popped in here. Uh, well, they were a plant that was started off somewhere else and then I've popped in here. Normally they don't do a lot over um, winter, but they've definitely put on a load of growth from the small little cuttings that they started out to be. Over here we have some rainbow chard and another rainbow chard here and pineapple. I didn't know where to put this pineapple head. Uh, we bought it at the shops and yeah, just twisted it off and popped it in here. So it'll live here for the time being and then we'll move it out when the weather warms up. And down in there, I dare say that is another warrigal green seedling popping up. So uh, we'll wait and see as, whether, as to whether we let that one live or not. Uh, what I would really like to do is um, rotate some of these plants out as well as the lettuce over here and cut back the amount of parsley we have growing and then just plant in a whole heap of Asian greens, really fast growing uh, plants, even through our mild winters here. And so we can just, you know, try and keep on top of those nitrates. Not sure if you can make him out down in there, but there's our little Tandanus catfish. We'll toss a couple of pellets in for him. I think he's almost big enough to go into the other tank. Our main concern was he might get um, stuck underneath the solids lifting outlet. So that's why we popped him down into the, um, the sum tank here. Just quickly, the fish. The fish are doing really well at the moment. Can't really complain. It is a little bit cold. So I do have a heater in here that I've been turning on. It's a 500 watt heater. It gets turned on on the really cold nights. I have had it on a little bit more over the last couple of weeks because I'm trying to keep the water temperature up to encourage the bacteria to set up shop in the little biofilter down in there. Uh, just quickly, I really do need to thank all of you folks out there who've been subscribed to the channel for so long. It just dawned on me the other day when I was going through and looking at the, the page, trying to change a few photos around, that we've had over a quarter of a million subscribers. Thank you very much, folks. Really do appreciate it. Um, it is one of those things. I'm not a massive channel. You can look at the subscribers and then you look at the views on the videos. I'm one of those uh, channels, a bookmark channel. I have one or two good videos. Uh, the rest are a little bit boring, just me walking around. Um, so one or two of the videos, people subscribe for them. I'm just really interested in helping you folks out who come back to the channel week after week and um, want to see what I'm up to, whether it's aquaponics or soil gardening or whatever. But yeah, uh, thank you very much to everyone who does come back every week. I really do appreciate it. And I also really do need to thank those folks who go above and beyond, the folks who have subscribed through the YouTube membership program and our membership website that I've built, the Farm Your Own Yard page. Thank you very much for your continued support, folks. I really do appreciate it. And thanks also to all those super contributors. Links to their websites and Facebook pages down in the description below. Thank you very much, folks. But I will leave it there. I do hope you're all well and happy and you're all staying safe in these crazy times. And I will catch you next clip. Cheers, folks. Have a top one.